So tonight we're, we're privileged to have Griffin's Mimi here preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, your co-pastor, co-founder of our church, co-founder of this fellowship. And uh, so if you would welcome the ministry gift of Pastor Michelle tonight. Hallelujah. Mimi. Praise God. Mimi. Yes. I love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you glory and honor Thank and praise. You, we magnify you Hallelujah. for your goodness, Thank for your you, mercy Lord. towards us. Thank Lord, we desire for your word yes, to Lord. penetrate every area of our thinking. Lord, we open our eyes to see and we open our ears to hear and we purpose in our hearts to understand what thus saith the Spirit to the church. Lord, we desire to follow in your path and in the plan that you have specifically laid out for us. And Lord, tonight we open ourselves to your word and to the moving of your Holy Spirit and we say in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Give somebody a high five before you're seated and let them know you're glad to be here at Faith Builders tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't we begin in the book of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Hallelujah. For whatsoever is born of God, I'm going to stop and let's just focus on this segment of this verse. Whatsoever is born of God. About two years ago, Pastor and I were dealing with some situations, a, a certain situation in our family, and we had done everything we knew in the natural arena, in the mental arena. We'd done everything that we knew to do uh, in, in our power. And as I was praying and asking the Lord about this situation, it was a situation with one of our children. As I was praying and seeking the Lord about this situation, the Lord said to me, I want you to begin dealing with this from the position of who you are in Christ. I had dealt with it from my position as a parent. I had dealt with it from my position in the natural stand, in the natural arena. And I had not had the results that I know God wanted to see in that situation. And so when he said to me, I want you to begin dealing with this situation, he said, he say, I want you to start with every situation in your life from the position that you have in Christ, from who you are in Christ. It makes such a big difference because our position in Christ is the position of our authority. It is the position where we hold the victory. It is the position that He has equipped us with that although we are here in this world, we are not of this world. We are, we are operating in this world as the body of Christ. We're operating in this world as His ambassador, His representative. And so to operate in this world to try to have, get our needs met, to try to get our prayers answered, to try to get situations to turn in the way that we know the Word says they should turn, to do that without being in our position in Christ is going to be an exercise in frustration because you're always going to be trying to use your flesh or your emotions or your will or your mind to do something that only your spirit can do. Notice this verse says, whatsoever is born of God, the new birth, the new creation is the position of victory that we need to become highly developed in operating from. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. The ability to come over the world and any operative force in the world, whether it be the curse, whether it be Satan, whether it be demon powers, the ability to come over that comes from our position as a born-again believer, the position we have in Christ. Whatsoever is born of God comes over the world, takes an ascendancy above the world, takes a position higher in authority and exercises that dominion and authority to rise above 
We do that because we are born of God. And this is the victory that comes over the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So we know that this person, this one who is born of God, has the ability all the time, every time, to overcome. We know that the Word of God tells us, thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that the Bible says, thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph in Christ. That is a continual flow of victory, always causes, is present tense. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. That's a present tense. Praise God. There's a present tense victory, an overcoming ability, and it's not going to operate from my emotional power. It's not going to operate through my mental power. It's going to operate because I take my place in Christ and I recognize I am not a mere human being, but I am a born again one. I am a son, a daughter of God. I'm a female son of God. I'm a son of God, a female son. And in him I live and in him I move and in him I have my being. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Praise God, no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. But every tongue, I said every tongue, I said every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, I shall prove it to be wrong because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And yet we have moved from the Old Testament into the New and we're not mere servants, but we're sons and daughters who serve our Father. We are the children of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes. Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot perceive or understand or operate in the kingdom of God. He's surely not going to be able to enter into it going to be able to to operate and flow in it but especially the fact that we need to be able to perceive the kingdom the bible says that when jesus said this in matthew chapter 6 he said seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you He said, don't worry about the things. Don't seek the things. Take no thought for tomorrow. Don't be giving your focus to what am I going to put on? What am I going to eat? What is all are we going to drink? And he said, those things, when when you pick up those questions, it moves you out of the arena of faith. It moves you out of the kingdom operation. And you pull yourself over into the operation of I'm trying to meet my own needs and my own ability. And so he said, I don't want you taking those kind of thoughts. He said, seek ye first the kingdom. The Amplified Bible says, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and his way of doing and being right. God's way of doing is a kingdom way. God's way of doing things is doing things from who you are in Christ, from your position as a born-again, blood-bought. God's way of doing is using the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. God's way of doing is calling those things that be not as though they were. God's way of doing is calling the end from the beginning. God's way of doing is, is to use the words that are spirit and they are alive, to use those words to move mountains. He said, if any man, whosoever shall speak to this mountain... Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. That's a kingdom way. That's a kingdom way. Seek ye first the kingdom way. But in order for me to be able to see it, in order for me to be able to perceive it and to move into it, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In John 3, 5, he goes on to say, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 
You know, Nicodemus asked him, Lord, how can we, I can't enter back into my mama's womb. What are you talking about being born again? He said, I'm not talking about your physical body being born again. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about a spiritual, a spiritual birth. I'm talking about your spirit going from the spirit nature of death into the spirit nature of life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have Zoe and that you might have Zoe in abundance. He said, he didn't say I've come that you might have it easy. I've come that just so that you could enter into the blessing. Although the blessing is part of the kingdom. But the blessing by itself without being born again would not have been operative in our life because it would continually been hindered by the lack of spiritual life in us. We needed more than just forgiveness of sins. We needed someone to come and redeem us from the spiritual death that yeah. dominated mankind yeah. the moment that Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the knowledge of, the, uh, of good and evil. Because he said, if you eat the fruit of the tree, in dying you shall die. Right. The Hebrew language says that's a twofold death. In dying, you shall die. Well, they didn't physically fall over dead, but they died spiritually the moment they ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the, 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 the spiritual death caused a, 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 the, their covering to leave them, and they recognized they were naked. They weren't naked before because they were covered before. God made everything with a covering, you know. God made everything with a covering. And the covering of mankind was the glory. God had, had covered us with glory, but when, they, when they, it, it was emanating from them, their spirits were alive with the glory of God. In Jesus, we have been returned back into a place where our, this is just the earthen vessel, and inside is the treasure. The spirit life in man is the treasure of God, the glory of God, the life of God. So Jesus said, I've come that you might have Zoe. I've come that you might have life. He said, I didn't come. He, he did not say, I've come so that you could have a good life. Although a good life is what we get as a result of operating from our position in Christ. But he came to give us the life of God in our spirit. That's what causes us to have a good life. That's what causes us to have a good marriage. That's what causes us to be able to operate the kingdom principles of finances in our life. That's what causes us to be able to walk above the curse and to operate in the blessing. Without the spirit life of God in us, we wouldn't be able to operate in those, in those arenas. So he, when, when the problem was a sin nature and Jesus came to return us back to having our spirits alive with the nature and life of God. And so he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we are not just forgiven sinners. We're not just forgiven sinners. That's why when we are helping people leave their past behind and walk away from alcoholism and addiction, we don't encourage people to say, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an, I'm an addict. No, I want, you to, I want you to begin operating from who you are in Christ. I want you to leave behind because Jesus said that, Jesus said that, that uh, if, you, uh, if you are born of the Spirit, you are now alive with the Spirit of God. The Word of born from above. Born of God. You are born of God, little children, 1 John says. Hallelujah. So when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord, the day that I received Jesus Christ as Lord, August 10th of 1992, I was so high they had to wake me up and ask me if I wanted to get saved. I was asleep in the pew. I had come the night before and I'd slept through. And when they woke me up, I cussed the preacher's wife out. She is my mother-in-law today, so I want you to know she has practiced forgiveness. <laughs> but I cussed her out and I don't remember it because I was so high on methadone trying to get off the drugs that I was addicted to. And when I received Jesus Christ as Lord, I got up off the floor and I thought at first the preacher knocked me down. And I realized at, at, at that moment, I, I totally 
Lost all interest in the fact that he knocked me down, not realizing it was the power of God that knocked me down. But I, I got up and, and I was about to say, he knocked me down. And then I realized, I started looking around and I realized, I am more sober than I have been in over 10 years. I have been on, on, a, on a constant high for a good 10 years, and this is the more, most sober. I was sober, instantly sober. Why? Because old things had passed away, and all things were created new. I wasn't just forgiven. I was made new. I was a new creature. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 shows us this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new. born again, born again, born again. On August 10th of 1992, Amen. Michelle, before Christ, died. That was Michelle B.C. She died. She passed away. I got up off that floor a new creature Amen. that had never existed before. One translation says a, a new species of being that had never existed before. The supernatural power of God entered into my heart when I received the word. The Bible says that you are born again uh, of the incorruptible word of God. Amen. I received the word and I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe God raised him from the dead. I asked him to be Lord. And then instantly at that moment, the spirit of God entered my heart and brought my spirit back to life. Before that time, I was sitting in that pew with a spiritually dead spirit. Amen. Spiritual death does not mean cease to exist. We think of death in our minds as a, a cessation of life. But spiritual death means separation from God. So a person who is spiritually dead is not, is not, uh, has not ceased to exist in their spirit. They are separated from God. It says in, in the New Testament, it says, you were dead in trespasses and sin. But it was talking about people who were walking, talking, breathing, Amen. sucking air. They, but it says they were dead in trespasses and sin. Where were they dead? They hadn't ceased to exist. They were spiritually dead. They were separated from God until they received Jesus as Lord. And when they received Jesus as Lord, their spirits received the life of God, they were born again, old things were passed away, and all things were created new. And so on August 10th of 1992, I became a brand new person. My spirit became newly created, and it says here that all things are of God. Old things are passed away, and all things are created new. I was created new. All things are become new. And verse 18, the first part of 18 says, all things are of God. Amen. So I was born again. I was made new. And all of me, my spirit was full of God. It was born of God. Amen. The Woos translation says, so that assuming that anyone is in Christ... He, notice in is a preposition. Prepositions note position, location. You are in this room. You are sitting in a chair. It is telling you your location. It is possible for a person to be in Christ. Amen. It is a position. It is an actual geographical position in the spirit realm. You are in Christ. You may think you're in DeSoto. You may think you are in a building, but your spirit is in Christ. You are in Christ. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a creation new in quality. The antiquated, out-of-date things which do not belong to the new life in Christ Jesus have passed away. Behold, all things have become new in quality. But the aforementioned all things are from God as a source. Amen. 
So you are alive with the life of God. Zoe, the word that I quoted, Jesus said, I've come that you might have Zoe and have Zoe more abundantly. It is a word that means the life of God. And it means the exact type and, and life that is in God at this very minute. You, born again people in this room, have the very life that God has in him as he sits on the throne in heaven right now, full of his God life. You also are sitting here full of his God life. You have Zoe God life in your spirit. That's why you have the victory that overcomes the world. Why? Because you're born of the very life that is in God the Father, the creator of all the ends of the earth. His life is in your spirit. And if you learn to operate from that position, if you learn to operate from who you are in Christ, you cannot be stopped. Amen. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Faith is the method for the person who is born of God. 1 John 5, 4 went on to say, I'm going to begin at the beginning. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory. We could say this is the victory that the one born of God uses to overcome the world. Even our faith. Faith is the victory. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not, not, not cute. Faith is not something that, oh yeah, yeah, I have faith, I have faith. No, faith is the force of the believer that God has provided. We have the God kind of faith, and it is the victory, the tool, the instrument that we are supposed to be using. Brother Steve Pitnick, he, he is a painter. He has specific tools that he uses. Pastor Tony Mendez has specific tools. He cannot accomplish his job without the tools that he needs to do all the, the performance automobiles that he works on. He, he needs those tools to be able to effectively accomplish the job that is before him. Faith is the tool. Faith is the instrument for us to effectively overcome the world. And so here in this church, we learn a lot about faith. We are blessed because I want you to know you can't, not everybody has, a, a, an un, has this revelation flowing. You're here because God brought you here to connect to this flow of revelation, this faith building flow. It goes on to say in 1 John 5, beginning in verse 5, Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So now we're going to give a focus to our faith. We're talking about world overcoming faith. We're talking about operating in this earth, operating in this world system from our position in Christ, overcoming the world system, overcoming the curse that's in the world. This is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Who is he that overcomes but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So now I'm giving a specific focus to my faith. I'm believing on Jesus. I'm believing on Jesus that he is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. So I, I need to give a focus to my faith. I need to give what, what energizes, what, what gives velocity to my faith, what gives the form to my faith is that I'm believing on Jesus. I'm believing on Jesus and I'm believing that he came by the water and he came by the blood. I'm believing specifically in what he accomplished when he came. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness. Do you see, I want you to underline in your verse there, the word water, the word blood, and the word Spirit. By water and blood, and it's the Spirit that bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. 
For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. What do they do in heaven? They bear record. If you want to, to check a record, you go look in a record book, right? Or maybe you get online and you look at a database that you formed and you look for the record of when that person was baptized or when that person you know, came in and signed up for something. You're looking for their records. You're looking for something that bears record that they were here. It bears record that they, they attended. It bears record that they registered for something. Pastor was in the marathon last week and he, he had to go and, and get his registration packet. And you know what? They looked up and they found the record where he had already registered and paid for that marathon. It, he, they found a document that bore record. And it says that in heaven there are three things that bear record. So there's some record keeping going on in heaven. God's keeping some records, and it says these three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They're in unity. They work together. There's no, there's no conflict among them. There's no contention in their midst. They operate as one, and they bear record. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. Now, witness is a little bit different than bearing record. And, and for all of you who have been here when pastors taught on how that New Testament believers are supposed to be led, we found out that the greatest leading for the New Testament believer is the inner witness. The witness of the Holy Ghost, the inner witness, is more, is more steadfast than a dream. It's more steadfast than a prophetic word. It's more steadfast than, than any, anything that seems to be spectacular. And the inner witness is what is for every believer. It's our heritage. Those that are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. That's the son's inheritance. Male sons and female sons, that's our inheritance, to be led by the Spirit of God. And the inward witness is one of the greatest leadings. And so this, he says, is a witness. There are three that bear witness on the earth. You could also look at this word bearing witness and you would say, I need you to come and testify for me that you saw me here at this place at such and such date at such and such time. Well, I can, I can bear witness to that. I was here. I saw you. You were here. We've got evidence. You were here. I will bear witness to that. And so this bearing witness is taking place on the earth. And it says there are three that bear witness on the earth. And I'm talking to you about the faith that overcomes the world. This is still talking about the faith that overcomes the world. Being born of God, operating from your position in Christ, means I've got to have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I've got to have faith in the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. I've got to have the kind of faith that is anchored. I've got to have the kind of faith that is bared. There's a record of it in heaven, and there's a witness of it on the earth. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith in the blood, our faith in the Spirit, our faith faith in the the water I'm, I have I have a, a a a faith that is propelling me it is giving me action why because I believe I've been crucified I believe I've been buried I believe I've been resurrected Amen. and there are three that bear witness and so there are three that bear witness in the earth the spirit the water and the blood that was in verse 6 wasn't it we believe that Jesus came by water and the blood, and the Spirit bears witness, right? Amen. So there are three bearing witness here in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. They're in unity. They coincide with each other. They connect with each other. They corroborate each other. Hallelujah. I want you to see the witness of the Spirit in the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Now we're going to read the whole verse and then we're going to pull out a nugget right out of the center of the verse. How much more... Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So the verse is talking about the blood of Jesus purging the conscience. That there is an application of the blood. And those of you who've read the book, The Guilt, the Shame, and the Blood that I wrote, I talked about that, how that, there were, that God dealt with me. That even though I believed and put my faith in the blood to deal with my guilt, I had not yet put faith in and applied the blood to deal with my shame. And that shame kept hindering my righteousness and my prayers weren't getting answered the way they needed to get answered until I took the application of the blood and applied it to my shame. So there is an application. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience, cleanse you of that shame? But I want you to look at this phrase that is stuck right in the middle of that revelation that indicates something very important. It says Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Jesus Christ, through the agency of the Holy Spirit, offered himself without spot to God. The Holy Spirit aided Jesus in offering himself. As he hung on the cross, every curse, every sin, every sickness, every disease came upon Jesus in a moment. The book of Isaiah says he was marred beyond human recognition. So much that people who were standing around the cross began to say, he must have cursed God because look what God has done to him. And they began to, it says, we hid as it were our faces from him. Why did they hide their faces? He was so marred. He was so grotesque. He was so mutilated in that moment when he became sin for us. In that moment, he became sin. He became the curse. The curse of all humanity, AIDS was put on Jesus, arthritis was put on Jesus, every addiction came on Jesus, leprosy came on Jesus, cancer came on Jesus, every disease, every curse came on him in a moment and people went, oh. Oh, I can't look. That is, dis that is beyond. I can't take. That is disgusting. Oh, my. They were horrified. It said we hid. We hid our faces because we couldn't look at it anymore. One minute they're sitting there saying, hey, if you're the son of God, come down from that cross. Come on. Oh, you're the great physician. Heal yourself now, Jesus. One minute they are there making fun of him and ridiculing him. And then when he becomes sin, when the curse is put upon him, they all took their breath and began hiding their faces and started gagging and losing their lunch. And I can't look at that. That is awful. He became Through the help, the agency, through the eternal spirit, he offered himself. He offered himself to become the curse. To separate from God the Father who he had never ever in the entire existence before time began, he'd never been separated from the Father. It says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God and the same was in the beginning with God. He'd never been separated. But through the eternal Spirit, he offered himself without spot. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Through the eternal spirit, he offered himself. Now look at Galatians 2.20. Because this is where the faith that overcomes the world bears witness with you. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I am crucified. With Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. 
And the life which I now live in this flesh, in this natural world, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself through the eternal spirit, offered himself for me. Amen. There's a bearing witness with us. There's a bearing witness with us. Why? Because I put my faith so completely in the fact that when Jesus hung on the cross, I don't know what he did for you, but I'm telling you, when he hung on the cross, he hung on the cross for me. I believe he did for you too, but you got to own that for yourself. You've got to take that for yourself. You've got to work that for yourself. I know I have come to the place where I know that I know that I know that I am crucified with him. I am crucified together with Christ. When he hung on the cross in the mind of God, God pulled me up out of time and put me back 2,015 years ago, hanging on the cross with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he became sin, he became sin for me. He became sin for me. I believe it so completely that I hung there with him. And when the enemy would come and try to accuse and say, Michelle, you're not really saved. You're still sin, sin conscious. You're still, a, you still have a sin nature. No, 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 no. The Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit was there. And He's a witness for me. When the enemy tries to accuse me and tell me I'm not saved, wait, wait, wait. Holy Spirit, you were there. You saw me. I was hanging on the cross with Jesus. I'm crucified together with him. He did that for me. He did that for me, and I believe it. And I put my faith in what he did for me. And I, I, have, I have made it mine. I have received it. To as many as receive him, he gives power to become sons of God. I receive. He did that in my place. He did that for me. I'm crucified together with Christ. I have a witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness. Why? Because the Spirit was there. As Christ offered himself through the eternal Spirit, the Spirit says, yeah, Michelle was on the cross with Jesus. Yeah, Charles was on the cross with Jesus. Todd was on the cross with Jesus. Paul was on the cross. Karen was on the cross with Jesus. Why? Because you're, I, I was there. I'm bearing witness. He did that for me. I am crucified. That's how the Apostle Paul and you and I can say, I am crucified with Christ. I've been hanging on the cross. Y'all don't know it, but let me tell you something. I have hung on the cross with Jesus. He did that for me. I am crucified. I have been crucified with Christ. Not me in Michelle steals ability, but in Christ, I've been crucified. He did that for me. It's paid for for me. Crucifixion has already been done. You can check that off my list. I've already been there and done that. In him, I did it. In him, I did it. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not I that live. Why? Because it's the life of God, the Christ, in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. 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 Crucified with Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, I've been crucified. I've been crucified. In Romans chapter 6, we see how the water bears witness with us. Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse, let's start in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. We're talking about born of God, overcomers of the world. This is the victory that overcomes faith. I have faith in the fact that I'm born of God. I have faith in the fact that I'm crucified with Christ. I am dead to sin. I do not have a sin nature. Any of us could sin, but we're not dominated by the sin nature. We can choose not to. You can go all day long without sinning. You should go all day long without sinning. Amen? 
You are not a sinner by nature anymore. That's why you're not an alcoholic by nature anymore or an addict by nature anymore. Why? Because you are born of God. All things are of you and all things are of God. Well, God's not an addict. God's not an alcoholic. And if you're born again and all things are of God, then you are no longer what you did. You're no longer where you were. You're no longer what you have done. A new creature in Christ. A new creature in Christ. A new creature in Christ. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. Dead to sin. If you walk along the road and you see a possum on the side of the road. Five pounds of possum in my headlights tonight. I think the time has come now to go from dim to bright. Whole nother day, whole nother story. You see a dead possum on the side of the road. You could go over and try to scare it, and it's not going to move. It's dead to fear. You could go over and splash cold water on it, and it's not going to jump up and try to run because it's dead to the feeling of that cold water. And when we're dead to sin, sin doesn't have the same impulses. It doesn't have the same remote control. See, God took the remote control away. See, see sin used to have a remote control at, that could, you know, pull your strings and get a lot of responses out of you. But when you begin to walk in Christ, when you begin to walk in who you are in Christ, those buttons don't work anymore. It's like there's no, there's no power connecting from that remote to your receiver. Why? Because you're connected to the receiver of the Word. And the Word of God is motivating you. And the Word of God is telling you to walk in love and, and forgive and, and to, to have a soft answer that turns away wrath. And the Word of God, and see, the enemy's over there pressing buttons saying, how come I can't get her to lose her temper? anymore because that remote doesn't work anymore I'm dead to that remote I'm dead to sin know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death when we experience the waters of baptism and if you have not been baptized we have a baptismal here you can get baptized you just need to let an usher or a greeter know, and they will get with pastor, and we can let you know when the next baptismal can be. But listen to how important baptism is. He says, when you are baptized, you are baptized into his death. Yes. Well, listen, your victory started on the cross, but there's a path for you to follow. Not only are you crucified, but you've been buried with him. Look at what it says here. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him. Yes. Now listen, did Galatians 2.20 say that I am crucified with? Yes, That's another preposition. With? With? That's a prepositional phrase, with Christ. I'm giving you your English lesson here. <laughs> English 101. With Christ. That's a prepositional phrase. This is also an indicator. It says that we are buried with him. With him. So when Jesus was crucified, I was crucified. Why? Because I put faith in the fact that he did that for me. And my faith works to the point. It works to the point. It works so completely to the point that if I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, God sees me as been crucified. It, it works to the point that if I believe when I am baptized, I am baptized into his death in the mind of God. I was put in the grave with the Lord Jesus. When he was put in the grave, I was in him. I was with him. I was buried with him. Crucified together with. Buried with. That's why baptism is important. Because how can you be resurrected if you've never been buried? Amen. Amen. To walk in that resurrection life. We've got to be coming up out of the grave. It says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. 
that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, you could go on to say, in the same way we are raised up from spiritual death by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Why? Because we've been raised from the dead. You know, I used to go to a place called Kmat down in Kansas City, Kansas. Kathleen and I would go and we would have, uh, it was a drug rehab center and we would go every Sunday after church here. She and I would go down, we'd finish praise and worship and we'd drive down and we'd preach at Kmat. And I gave altar calls. It was one of the first places I really began, you know, just learning how to give an altar call and leading people to the Lord. And I kept giving these altar calls. And I would say, if you, and you know, the, everybody in there wanted God to help them fix their life. You know, they wanted God to help them get their life back. And so I would say, if you want God's help, if you just come tell God you're sorry, come down here and receive Jesus as Lord. I, I had them coming down and, and repenting of their sins. But then the Lord took me over to Romans chapter 10 and he said, I said, Lord, why are these people coming back every week praying the same sinner's prayer and not having any victory Monday through Sunday? And he said, look at the way you're leading them to the Lord, Michelle. And I look over at Romans chapter 10 and it says, Whosoever shall believe in his heart. Let's look at it. Put your eyes on it with me. Look over at 10, Romans chapter 10. Verse 9. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. So I was having them say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore. Help me to get not do this. You know, I was having them confess their sins, but that's not what this says. They need to confess Jesus is Lord. See, they were still having addiction Lord them. They were still having the alcoholism and the shame and the failure Lord them. And, and he said, you're, 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 you've got to be specific here. If you shall confess with your mouth, Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life. When you make Jesus Lord, sickness can't Lord over you. Depression can't Lord over you. Fear can't Lord over you. Addiction can't Lord over you. Why, if Jesus is Lord, he's Lord. He's governor of our, of our all. And if Jesus is Lord, you can't be Lord anymore either. He said, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, or we could say the Lordship of Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. That's what you have to believe. That's what you have to believe. You have to believe God raised Jesus from the dead. Because if God didn't raise Jesus from the dead, how can he raise any of us? 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Um, this is a rabbit trail. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. See, when Adam ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death entered. But when Jesus Christ came and obeyed the Father, he said, I've come to do your will. It says, when he entered into the world, he said, a body you have prepared me. These burnt offerings of bulls and goats, they're not pleasing to you. A body you have prepared me. I've come to do your will, O God. What was the will of God? That Jesus would be the lamb slain. That Jesus would, he said, a body you have prepared me. For what purpose? To offer it? The blood of the bulls and goats is what he referenced in that same verse in Hebrews. He said, the blood and bulls and goats are not pleasing you. Why? Because they're not bringing man into relationship with you. They're just covering their sin. So my blood can bring mankind back into relationship with you. Since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, spiritually dead. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive, spiritually alive. So we have to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. 
We have to put our faith, we have to give our focus to that. I have to make Jesus Lord with my mouth. I have to verbally accept him as Lord, and in my heart I have to believe God raised Jesus from the dead. Why? Because this is the victory that overcomes the world. What's it focused on? It's focused on I'm crucified together with Christ. I'm buried together with Christ. And I've been resurrected together with Christ. It goes on to say that in Romans chapter 6. Back up to Romans 6 with me. Therefore, we are buried with him, verse 4, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in this newness of life. The same way Christ was raised from the dead, you could say, like as Christ was raised, we are raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Or you could say, raised up together in the likeness of his resurrection. So do you see that in order for you to be resurrected, you have to die? You have to be buried? If you've been planted, you should be raised up. Amen? Amen. So the water is a witness. There are three that bear witness on the earth. The Spirit bears witness that I've been crucified. You've been crucified together with Christ. And then the water witnesses. Yes, Your Honor, I stand here on this place today before this court to witness that Michelle has been buried together with Christ. The waters of baptism witness that. They speak that for me. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 13, I want you to see how the blood operates in the resurrection. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. God raised Jesus through the blood. It says God brought again from the dead through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Because of that blood covenant, he had the legal right to raise Jesus from the dead. Because Abraham had walked up the mountain with his son Isaac and offered God his son, although God did not require him to complete the action, he had done it so completely in his heart that, and said in his heart, I am willing to do this because God will raise him from the dead if he needs to. Abraham, Abraham had faith that God would raise Isaac from the dead. And Abraham, that's what I need right there, Abraham. That's what I need. Thank you very much. Now, I can get it. I can get done. I have a legal right to believe I will raise my son from the dead. And when God offered his son on the mountain as a covenant completion of what Abraham had started in bringing to God Isaac because God asked for him and, and, and believing that God would raise him from the dead, God offered his son and his son died, was buried, and paid the price necessary. The Bible says the chastisement necessary to obtain our peace was laid on him. The, the punishment necessary for you and I to have a, a complete relationship with God, a reconciliation with God, to have everything wiped clean off the slate. When Brother uh, Copeland recently asked the Lord about two years ago, Lord, give me your definition of grace. And God said, it's like sin never happened. It's like sin never happened. That's the relationship God has with us through Jesus. You are in Christ, and it's like sin never happened. You can talk to your Father God like sin never happened. You can interact with God. You can operate in this world in a place of dominion and authority because you are in a place in Christ, and it's like sin never happened. It's like you never sinned. 
That's what justified means. Just as if I'd never sinned. I've been justified by the blood. God, through the blood of the everlasting eternal covenant, brought again from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the resurrection power in your life is just as real. It's the same resurrection power. You've been crucified together with Christ. You've been buried with Him in baptism. And you've been resurrected into the newness of life. And this is the life that we are to operate from on a daily basis. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Pastor? Hallelujah. Stay right there. Stay right there. Hallelujah. Go to... uh, Early. You don't have nothing to do, do you? Thank you. Let me sit down. You it is, no, no, stay right here. Stay right here. <laughs> it, it is exactly 8.06 if you're taking medicine. <laughs> Romans chapter 6. Go to Romans chapter 6. Now, I'm not preaching because we've already had a magnificent message. Well, you could, you could add to it. But listen. Well, I will, but just listen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, now notice this, verse 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, notice this, death, how did death come? By Adam, because sin, right? Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died to sin how often? Once. But in that he lives, he lives to God. What's the very next word? Likewise. In that same way. Reckon. All right? Now that's not I reckon. (laughs) That word reckon is an accounting term. Yes. It means to record the figures. It means to balance the books. Now, all I'm going to say is this. There are too many people that their books are out of balance. All right. And they do way too much identification with Adam. They do way too much identifying with the old man, with the sin nature. And he said that I'm supposed to reckon myself, notice, to be dead indeed, Indeed is a is a uh, emphatic word. It it means without doubt. Without a doubt, I am dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because I am dead indeed to sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ my Lord. I am able to not allow sin to reign in my mortal body. Amen. 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 Dead to sin. Go ahead. Dead to sin. No, go ahead. Amen. (laughs) Do you see that? That was my amen corner. I I need you to see that. And that, that takes, what's your job here? To do it? To believe it? Believe it. There's nothing to do here but to believe. The the doing has already been done. Who died? Jesus died. Who died with Jesus? I did. Who was buried? I was buried with him, right? Who rose again? Jesus did it all. My job is to believe what he did. I said my job is to believe what he did. So if we're dead indeed to sin... Sin doesn't reign in our body. Amen. 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 Do you see that? Yes. So say out loud, I identify. I identify. With Christ. With Christ. And his finished work. And his finished work. I do not identify. I do not identify. With the sin nature. With the sin nature. Or the failures of my past. Or the failures of my past. I am now and forever. I am now forever. A new creature. A new creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dead in your sins. 
And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, it says that we were buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation. My God, that'll preach for six months. <laughs> through the faith of the operation of God, All right. who raised him from the dead. And you being dead. Now, what kind of word is being? You being at that time. Yes. Dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Hath he quickened, say brought to life. Brought to life. Together. Together with. Together with him. He brought us to life together with him. Yes. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Hallelujah. So we've been quickened together with him. Yes. Do you see that? That's what you got to identify with. Now, I know that seems elementary. People get depressed because they don't identify with Jesus. Jesus was never depressed. Amen. Jesus is not depressed now. Jesus is not sick now. Jesus is not poor. Jesus wasn't poor and he's not poor now. Are you with me? I've got to identify with Christ. Everything else is to identify with the weakness of the flesh. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 6, we'll close with this. He said in Romans 6, he said, if I just look at this thing from the natural... He said, I don't find any good thing in me. Amen. But then he said this, who will deliver me from this body of death? The Moffat translation says, thank God. He will do it through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you could see how you look in Christ, you'd throw yourself a party. Amen.